Hi, I'm Pastor Joe Spence. I know this message is going to encourage you, strengthen you, and take you to the next level. Stay tuned to the end. I want to pray a special prayer with you. Enjoy the broadcast. We've been talking about the covenant. I've really, I, I really enjoyed, um, you know, bringing this word and studying this out. It's so important. It is so important. Pastor Sarah preached that message on, on the covenant before I started this series and really broke down um, what a covenant is, right? Uh, you need to understand that. That's, that's really the, uh, the cornerstone. You need to understand covenant. As a New Testament believer, as a Christian, as a born-again believer, uh, you need to understand covenant. If you don't understand covenant, you'll always uh, uh, be playing from behind, right? You'll, you'll always be struggling to, to understand, struggling to receive. Uh, when, but when you understand that you have a covenant with Almighty God, my gosh, things change, right? When you know who's in your corner, when you know who's backing you, right, things change. Uh, we explained a little bit about the covenant, how, uh, you know, it was big in, in Africa among the tribes. And, and they would cut blood covenant between, you know, my tribe and your tribe. And literally blood would be spilt and we'd, they'd mix it together and they would say, oh, we are now one. And what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. And if I'm ever, uh, you know, in your land and I need help, they have to come to my aid and vice versa. If I ever broke covenant, I would pay for it with my life. That's how serious covenant uh, it was taken uh, by, by the tribes in Africa. They understood how important it was. If you broke covenant, your own people would take you out because of the shame and, and, and because of the dishonor. They would never, you would not break covenant. And that's man, right? But God, God does not break covenant. God will always do what he says he's going to do. Bottom line, Regardless of what you're experiencing, you have to remember, God will always do what he says. You, you never change what you believe based upon what you're going through, right? You, you, don't, you don't water down the word of God based on your experiences. You figure, how to, you figure out how to, how, to, how to apply the word. You figure out where you're missing it, but you never say, oh, I'm not sure about that because of what you're going through, if, if it's contrary to the word of God. And you know, millions have done that. Millions, especially with the book of Acts, because they're not experiencing certain things. They water it down. They're, well, I'm not sure that's for today and this and that. They talk themselves out of it. You know, you talk to a, I've talked to a pastor. Like, I don't know why you preach on healing so much. Um, they go, well, because it's in the Word. Uh, uh, do you preach on it? No. Do you see healings in your church? No. Well, that's why you don't preach on it. People have no idea about healing because it's not being preached. And, and so, but we've made up our mind. We're going to preach the whole counsel of God, the whole counsel of the Word, right? And, and, and so, you know, there are things we emphasize, but the whole counsel, we need to know this word. We need to get this word on the inside, right? We need to have understanding of this word. That's why Life in Christ Church members bring their Bible to church. Come on, say amen. Right? You bring your word to the church. You bring your notebook to the church, and you're ready to learn, and you're ready to grow, and you're ready to, to develop. Amen. Thank God for the iPad. I have iPads galore, and, 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 I, and I like my Bible app, but there's something about this right here. I, uh, smelling it, feeling it, you know what I'm saying? I, I, man, this, this is my Bible. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> and the Marine Corps, this is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> but this is my Bible. It's got my name on it right there. You got to get familiar with this word. You got to be comfortable with the word. And I know it can be intimidating, right? But, but we, you need to start somewhere. New Living Translation, New King James Version, right? Getting in there and at least one chapter a day. You can read more, huh? but it, every member of Life in Christ Church reads one chapter a day. At least one chapter a day. Come on. Every member of Life in Christ Church reads their chapter a day. Say amen to that. Building consistency and growth. And I'd rather you read one chapter a day than six chapters every eight weeks. Come on, Amen. One chapter a day. You can do more, but one chapter a day. From now on, one chapter a day. You find time to at least read one. That's the start. Obviously, we're, we're looking to grow on that, but we need to start to develop in that. So we've been talking about the covenant real quick. We're going to recap. You go to Genesis chapter 17. Amen. Here at this church, we're not going to settle for a life of existence. We're, gonna, we're going for a life of substance. Right? We're not going to aimlessly go through life and kind of whatever hits us, hits us. Whatever happens, happens. No, 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 no. We're going to learn. We're going to grow. We're going to apply. Say, I'm a doer of the word. 
I'm a doer of the word. The Bible says only the doer of the word gets results. So make up your mind right now that you're a doer of the word. That I put into action what I learn. Right? The Bible says don't even, don't, you're deceiving yourself into thinking that you're going to get results if you're not applying the word. And you know, some of you, oh, I've done this, I made mistakes, you know, I, I, I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing. And, but you're in the right place. I'm glad you're in church. Don't allow the enemy to, to condemn you, to stop you from receiving, right? Because that's what he's here to do. He's here to clog your pipe so that you don't receive the seed, so that you can't get, you know, put it into action. The seed is the word. So you don't receive the word, right? The enemy will condemn you for what you've done, or, you know, what you're going through. Don't allow it. And as soon as you walk through that door, condemnation has to go. There's no condemnation allowed in here amen none of it no condemnation so I declare condemnation has to go in Jesus name yeah I declare your heart is ready to receive because you're walking in love see I walk in love I forgive I receive the word with gladness I'm good ground in Jesus name all right Genesis 17 1 I'm going to go to verse 10 when Abraham was not when Abram was nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant uh, between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Somebody say exceedingly. And then Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly, say exceedingly, exceedingly. fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. Verse 7, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants. That's a very important part. After you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. We talked about how every covenant that God cut with man included land. If you study it out, every one of them included land, right? There's no difference for us. We have the same uh, promises that were given to Abraham apply to us. We'll, we'll, we'll see the scripture here as far as recap, but I want you to start to possess land. Amen. I want you to start to think I'm a homeowner. I, I, I own land. I own property amen you, you're not the lender you're not the borrower you're the lender amen you're the head not the tail you're above not beneath come on amen you have to start to see yourself this way because the bible says as a man thinketh so is he if you see yourself uh, and you think of yourself as some poor i'm just poor my daddy was poor his daddy before him was poor we just poor and we're proud you heard people talk like that well god will deliver you from both poor and and and, and pride if you let him Amen. If you, if you talk like that and think like that, go, oh, I was raised here and, I, and that's who we are and we're okay with that. Uh, well, I mean, you know, that's selfish. If you're just okay with you just going by, uh, you know, uh, and just getting by. What about helping other people? You ever think of that? Huh? You ever think about helping other people? Do you know people in need? Do you know people that are struggling right now? Single moms, widows, people struggling with their rent, right? Don't you want to be a blessing? So step one really is changing the way you think, changing the way you talk. It has to line up with what you believe, and that's why we're getting this into you. We're hitting this. We're taking time to, to get this on the inside of you so that you believe that you actually have a covenant because you do. And when you start to believe that, you start to talk different, right? You start to walk differently, and that will start to change some things in your life. Amen. Once, you, once it becomes real on the inside, it will start to become real on the outside. When you get it on the inside, man, I'm not poor. Come on. I'm rich. Say, I'm rich. I'm quick, I'm sharp, I'm alert, good looking, rich, and a major blessing. Amen. That's why I say that over you, right? Well, I don't know. Why would you say that? Well, what do you want to say? I'm ugly, I'm broke, I'm, de I'm depressed, uh, uh, people don't like me. Is that what you'd rather say? I mean, people, I know people say that all the time, and nobody questions that. When somebody goes, oh, I'm so stupid, nobody says nothing, they laugh. Uh -huh. But if I say, I'm so smart, I'm quick, I'm sharp by the anointing, they look at me like, who does he think he is? Hey. I'm doing the same thing you're doing, but I'm doing it in the positive way, aligning my words with the Bible. Right? No, no, nobody will criticize the guy saying, oh, man, we just struggle all the time. We're just broke. And, man, I, and nobody says nothing. Oh, it'll be okay. You know, but if I say, you know, if I line my words up, I'm, I'm, I'm strong in the Lord. I, I'm, I'm going all the way. And I start talking like that. People think you're arrogant. But really, you're just a believer. <laughs> But the problem is so many preachers, unfortunately, have preached the, uh, from the pulpit the opposite. 
that poverty and God are linked together by a short rope. <laughs> that it, they, they go hand in hand. The, 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 the poorer you are, the holier you are. There are actually some Christian sects that actually, that actually take a vow of poverty. Where is that in the Bible? God never rewarded anybody with poverty. He never said, good job, Abraham. Do you think if we were to get Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph down here and interview them and say, uh, Abraham, uh, there's a lot of people talking about poverty in the church and how God wants you to be poor and he's teaching lessons and this and that. What, are, what, what was your experience with God? What do you think he's going to say? Oh, no, no, God took care of me <laughs> in grand style. And then if you look at Abraham, if you look at Isaac and you say, Isaac, what was your experience with God? How do you know Father God? He would say, oh, no, no, God, man, he blessed me and increased me. And if you go on down the line, that would be their testimony. Well, how I many you know God doesn't change? <laughs> the same God that blessed Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph down the line, the, the people of Israel, right, is, this, is your God. Amen. Why, why, why were they the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob? Because he was saying, the same thing I did for them, I'll do for that. That's what he was saying when he appeared. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why? Why is he saying that? Obviously, it's for a good reason. He's trying to say, I blessed them, and I'll do the same for you. I'm the one that prospered them and increased them. So I'm showing up just letting you know that, that what I did for them, I'm going to do for you. That's what God is doing for us. He's showing up these last couple weeks. He's saying, hello, hello, congregation. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I cut a covenant with your father Abraham. And I just want to let you know what I did for him, what I did for Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. I'm going to do for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Because we went through. This isn't me just paraphrasing. We went through the Bible. We saw, we saw um, uh, Abraham, how he was blessed. And we saw Isaac, how God appeared to him and explained to him about the covenant. And we saw how Isaac's life turned out. Then we looked at Jacob and we saw how God appeared to Jacob and said, I'm, I'm your granddaddy's dad. I'm your granddaddy's God. And I'm your daddy's God. And I bless them. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to take care of you because of the covenant that I cut with Abraham. Same thing with Joseph. So you, you, we saw. We saw how God appeared, showed himself... To, 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 to them and explain what was going to happen. Then we looked at this scripture, which really ties it all together. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. Write that down. Galatians 3, 29. The cornerstone right here. Because it's all good reading about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from back in the day, Old Testament, way back. You're like, well, how does that apply to me? How does that, <laughs> okay, God bless them. Okay, that's great. But what does that have to do with me? Bible says, Galatians 3, 29, and now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. What God promised to Abraham is so important. We're studying this. Why? Not to give you a history lesson, but sh I'm showing you that it belongs to you. It belongs to you. I like what, the, what um, King James says, that, and if you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And what is the promise? I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you and their generations, right? And I will bless you and I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will multiply you, right? That's the promise. Amen. So that, that's just a little recap. Um, and, you know, uh, Pastor Sarah touched on this a little bit. This is another part. We can go down this route, but we're just going to touch on it briefly. He said, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants. Okay, that was spoken to Abraham, but that also applies to you and your descendants. Right? right? Psalms 112, 2 and 3 says, his descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in this house, and his righteousness endures forever. So you can claim that for your, your children and your grandchildren. Well, my descendants will be mighty on the earth. My descendants will be strong in the Lord. My descendants have a covenant, come on, with Almighty God, and they're blessed and they're prospering. My dear grandchildren will only know the goodness of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord. Amen. You can speak that and, and, and start, to, to, to start to really uh, put that on the inside of your kids. I mean, that's good that you're doing that, but I would let your kids hear that. You're blessed of the Lord. When I drive my daughter to school, she knows it. She, uh, we, we, every, just like I do it with you guys, I'll say, all right, you ready? We're going to confess uh, this over our lives. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm good looking. I'm rich, and I'm a major blessing. Getting that on the inside, you have a covenant with God. The favor of God is upon your life. Favor with the teacher. Favor with the students. Come on. You have supernatural recall of information. God loves you. Come on. You're, you're, you're a leader. I'm getting that on the inside of her. And I'm showing her that God is the reason why, that anything good is happening in your life, that you are blessing, that you are blessed. 
My, some, some parents beat down their kids. You're so stupid. You're never going to get it. You're never going to amount to nothing. And you keep talking like that. That's exactly what's going to happen. But when people do that, nobody says nothing. They're like, oh, yeah, good parenting, yeah. No, but if we, if we, we speak blessing over the kids, there's a problem with that. No, no, we're not embarrassed about these things. We're not ashamed of the blessing of the Lord. I'm not ashamed of the blessing of the Lord. Are you ashamed of the blessing? If you're ashamed of the blessing, you will never have the blessing. Amen. You will never, you will never experience this blessing. And remember, we're, we're, we're out to be distribution centers in the kingdom of God. We're not after worldly riches. We're after covenant wealth. Big difference. Big difference, right? Well, money doesn't consume us. The love of money is the root of all evil. We don't love money. Money is a tool. Amen. We're just applying God's rules and God's ways to obtain it, to be a blessing on this earth, to be a distribution center in the kingdom of God. Mission trip, I'll fund it. Oh, you're building a church? I'll fund that church. We'll take care of that. Oh, you're doing this for the Lord? Lord, how much you want me to do the whole thing? Yes, no problem, Lord. Boom, take care of that, right? So people can stop selling chicken dinners. Amen. We're going on a mission trip. We need to sell chicken. They're selling chickens for three months to go, on, to go to Columbia to do it. Man, people should be writing checks and taking care of that. Come on, people. God is raising up people in this church right here that are going to take care of those kind of things. Amen. Put an end to chicken dinners being sold. Amen. I get the spirit behind it, but, but no, no, we ain't doing none of that. There ain't enough cookies or T-shirts or chicken dinners to, to fund what God is doing here. Amen. Praise God. Sorry if I'm stepping on some toes. <laughs> you sell your chicken dinner, but I ain't here. Say, my descendants will be mighty on the earth. Wealth and riches. Say this. Wealth and riches are in my house. In Jesus' name. And, 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 you know, throughout those times of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph even, you know, there was famine in the land. There was actually severe famine, some version says, right? Uh, some Bible versions say that there was severe famine. But the covenant of God uh, doesn't uh, not work when there's famine, right? It's not subject to the world's economy. It's not subject to what's happening on the stock market. It's not subject to what's happening at your job. It's not subject to, 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 the, to the, the real estate market does not matter. You have a covenant with Almighty God. People could, there could be bread lines. There could be unemployment all time high. But no, no, you are a righteous, come on, blessed, amen, covenant working believer of, come on, amen. And, and you understand that, that no, no matter what is going on around you, God's going to take care of you. And God, when you make God, because you have to understand this, God, God has to be your source. I don't even say, oh, man, there's many sources he can use. No, there's only one source, many channels, but one source. Change the way you start to talk about that, too. Oh, many, God can get it to you, many sources. No, 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 one source. God is that source. He uses different channels in different ways. But he revealed himself in the Old Testament as El Shaddai. Come on, El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. Right, that, that, the names of God, if you study it out, a lot of times uh, we, we like to, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, and we like to use that, but we don't talk about El Shaddai. <laughs> that's your daddy. That's your, that's your God, El Shaddai. More than enough. The many-breasted one will take care of you, man, and, 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 and will make sure that, that no matter what is happening around you, that you are taken care of. Because he said, I will establish my covenant. You'll see throughout the Bible, people are struggling, the world is struggling, the economy is struggling. He led, he'll lead you to where the water is. He'll fly meat, the ravens flapping their wings, bringing the meat in. Come on, amen. I believe God will bring, bring meat to my house by, by way of ravens if need be. Amen. He'll lead me to where the water is, need be. That's the God we serve. Get it on the inside. God is my source. Say, God is my source. Your job is not your source. Your degrees are not your source. Your ability is not your source. God is your source. Bottom line. But God is your source. All right. Go to 3 John 2. We'll just get out what we can, and we'll hook back up next week, right? You'll be back next week, right? You'll be back, right? right. See you next week. <laughs> not in a rush. We got a lot going on, a lot, a lot of word, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of things to to bring forth. I'm not going to rush this. We're not in a rush here. Uh, and and uh, thank God for church. That's what I love about church. We just hook back up next week and we just get more and, and we'll, we don't have to get it all out in one shot. So we're going to take our time with this. Uh, we're going to get this into our spirits. 
Uh, man, there's nothing fun, nothing fun about being broke. Nothing. Uh, it's not a blessing. God is not out to teach you a lesson. God teaches, but by his word. doesn't teach through hardship. You may learn something, but, but that's not God's method of teaching you, right? His method of teaching you is the Holy Ghost and the word. <laughs> That's how he teaches, right? So don't allow some, some, some preacher or man. A lot of people run to man and getting all kind of ideas. Stop, stop conferring with man, all right? Stop, stop going and asking a bunch of questions when the Bible's very clear about situations, very clear about different things. And we want to go and ask and ask and ask, confusing ourselves. Next thing you know, you don't even know which way is up because you've asked so many opinions and so many, you know, uh, everybody's got an opinion. You know that? Did you realize that? Everybody has an opinion. Everybody's got something to say. I'm not out trying to ask everybody, right? I want to know what the Word says, and, and if you have a spiritual father, somebody you trust, fine. But be careful about conferring with men all the time on everything. Amen? Be very careful with that. All right, but Third John 2, uh, towards the end of the New Testament. Beloved, I wish above all things, somebody say all things, that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So, uh, we talked about last week, above all things, God is saying, have you know this scripture is to us, right? This scripture is to us. I believe that. I believe that this is written. Uh, it's not just a, a, a greeting, right? I, if it was just some whatever, whatever, why was it in the Bible? Because I know the disciples did a lot of things that are not in the Bible, right? But for this scripture to be in the Bible, I believe there's meaning to it. And I, and I believe that it's God speaking through us, to us, right? And, and this is for us. So don't allow anybody to talk you out of it. Beloved, I wish above all things. All things mean what? All things, right? Last time I checked, all means what? In the Greek, it means what? All. <laughs> all means all, right? Above all things. God is saying above every other thing that I will, every other thing that I will, I will that you be prosperous and in good health. Man, so, oh, so I, mean, I don't really care about all that. You know what I mean? Well, if it's God's will, will you submit to it? If it's the will of God, will you submit to it? When you get past your religious thinking and, and, and what, what, you, what you've been taught by other people, what you, what you think, and, and realize that this is the word of God, and it's not only the word of God, it's his will above all other things that you prosper and be in health. And let me just tell you, prosperity means prosperity. Not spiritual prosperity, prosperity means prosperity. And in health means health, right? Health and wealth. People like to clown us, oh, you're that health and wealth. Really who they're clowning is Jesus. They ain't mocking me. They're mocking the master. They're, 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 they're mocking God. This is his word right here. They're not mocking Brother Hagin, even though they think they are, or, some, or Brother Copeland or whoever. This is the word of God. So when, they, when you hear people talk like that, health and wealth, or you go to that health and wealth church, or you go to that church that believes in prosperity. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. We believe in the word of God. Above all things, God is telling us that he wishes that we would prosper and be in good health. I believe that. Why don't you believe that? Uh, I, uh, uh, I believe this word above all things. Prosperity means prosperity. Health means health. Right? Like I said before, never water down the scriptures based on your experience. Never bring this down and, and try to wiggle your way out of it based upon what your experience is. Figure out how you can apply this and start to see results. And that's what we're doing here. Right? So praise God. And, 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 and you know, in Psalms, I love this. Psalms 105, 37. The children of Israel are being brought out. Right? The Bible says that he also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble among them. So when God was delivering his people from the bondages of, 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 of Egypt, the first two things that he did was what? He prospered them and he healed them. <laughs> now, come on, come listen to this. He, they, they left with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble among them. Because why? He wishes, and, oh, he wills above all else that you prosper and be in good health. So he delivered the children of Israel. He made sure that they prospered and that they were in good health. This shows you that God cares about this. Because, well, God don't really care about money. He don't really care about material things. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. When he delivered his children, the first two things, boom, took care of them and healed them. And above all other things, say above all else, he wishes that I prosper and be in good health. Go to 2 Corinthians Chapter 8, verse 9. That's good. He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble among his tribe. Amen. So 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, say rich. rich. I know sometimes in church, rich, almost like a curse word, but not in this church. For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. You know, that's redemptive language, right? That, that's, that's saying that he, he did one thing so that you could become another thing, right? Just like he took our sickness, our infirmity upon him so that we could be healed. He took sin upon him so that we could be saved. He took poverty so that we could be rich, right? You have no problem, right? Oh, some of you, most of you don't, especially in this church, have no problem going around saying, I'm healed, even though there's no evidence of you being healed. You're believing God's word, and you're applying, right, what you know. You're speaking it, right? You're, 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 you're doing what you know to do, holding fast to your confession. I'm healed. I'm strong. I'm well, even though you're getting a, a bad report, right? So how come we don't do the same thing when we're broke? How come we don't go around saying, I'm rich, I'm rich. Come on, I'm wealthy, even though you're broke is a joke, actually, right? Even though your bank account's struggling, you're struggling to pay the bills. But the same way you go around saying you're healed, you're strong, you're well, you should be going around saying, I'm wealthy, I'm rich. Come on, I live a life of abundance. Come on, I'm the head, not the tail, above, not beneath, amen. And God wishes above all things that I prosper and be in good health. Come on, glory to God. He became poor that I may be rich, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray the message blessed you. We never like to end a broadcast without giving you the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you mean business with God, he means business with you. I want you to join me in praying this very simple but powerful prayer. Mean it with all your heart. Repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I repent of all my sin and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you were crucified, and on the third day you rose from the dead. I give you my life. Do something with it. I believe I am now saved in Jesus' name. The Bible says all the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you just prayed that prayer. Welcome to the family of God. Thank you so much for watching. For more content, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. We pray you would consider partnering with us to see souls saved and the gospel preached around the world. God is not finished with America. Stand with us as we contend for revival in our land. Here are some ways you can give. Go to licchurch.com slash give, or you can give through our cash app, or you can scan the QR code. We love you and have a blessed day.